Welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about luck and coffee stock. Before I start the video guys, please make sure to leave a like on the video below. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Join the family guys that's going on investing journey together. So today we're going to be talking about luck and coffee stock. And if you don't know what luck and coffee stock, it's a coffee chain that's based out of China. Basically a huge coffee chain. It's got 6,000 plus stores and it came out fast. It came out swinging. Basically saying that it was going to be the competitor of Starbucks and it did leave a pretty good name at first in itself in China. It was expanding like crazy and a lot of people were very bullish on Luck and Coffee because it was expanding like crazy. It had a lot of big time investors behind its name. A lot of people were bullish on it. Then uh, COVID-19 hit or the pandemic we know. So then the stock ended up not doing so well for a couple months. It, it was trading around uh, $50 a share as you guys can see here in the one year chart. It sank a little bit, not too much, probably to about $35, kind of trading in between there. Obviously, a lot of stocks did take a good hit during the pandemic. Then Muddy Waters published a research report basically stating that uh, Luck and Coffee is fabricating a lot of their sales. They're inflating their revenues and the company is not doing as well as people were hoping. And so after the report, the, the company basically got probed. And it turned out, yes, it was true. Luck and Coffee did in case, in, indeed fabricate a lot of their sales. It turned out they were inflating revenues up to 2.2 billion yuan, or that's an equivalent of 210 million US dollars. No one knows the extent of the fraud yet just because they have not released to the public updated financials. So no one knows how the company is actually doing. But this caused the stock to basically go from $30 all the way down to about $4.00. It went through a whole kind of process where the stock was on a halt, basically a T12 halt, basically that like no one could trade this, this, no one could trade the stock, no one could trade the shares. So if you own shares in Luck and Coffee, you weren't allowed to trade them, you weren't allowed to sell them. And then shortly after, the stock did go off a halt, and then basically, you know, Nasdaq said, okay, we're gonna give you time to, you know, let people get out of their positions. And then basically, you know, they wanted to delist Luck and Coffee off the New York Stock Exchange. Luck and Coffee appealed this, but when it came down to it at the end of the day, Luck and Coffee did indeed get delisted off NASDAQ, which is the biggest stock exchange ever. And now it currently trades over the counter. So what's the difference between over the counter and what's the difference between actually trading on NASDAQ? Well, over the counter generally, not a lot of news is as populated on over-the-counter stocks. Generally, there's a lot less volume and generally there's a lot less liquidity you can have on over-the-counter. I am not bashing over-the-counter. I know there's a lot of good stocks that trade over-the-counter, but I'm just stating the, the, the facts kind of what the difference between over-the-counter and NASDAQ is just generally less populated with trades and people because most brokerages don't allow people to trade over-the-counter stocks. So I, I use Webull, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade and all these other brokers. I think TD Ameritrade does allow over the counter. I'm not too sure, but I know Webull and Robinhood both do not allow over the counter trading. So the volume is just generally less. But I still, after all this, you know, I went through a lot of lawsuits. People thought I was going bankrupt. But after all this, I'm actually still bullish on Luck and Coffee. I still think Luck and Coffee can make a turnaround, and it currently is making a turnaround. They fired all the bad management and they put a lot of new management in place. You know, and this is actually very good for the company. When fraud hits a company, most investors, most people want to see that they're actually doing something about it, that they're actually cleaning out the management. So the company is no longer run by corrupt people. So they already did that. The company is still expanding, obviously not as fast because they don't have as much money from investors as they did before. Uh, and you have to understand as well that, you know, the company that was once sitting at a 7 billion market cap is probably sitting around 1 billion. Goldman Sachs and all these big companies sold all their shares. They sold all their stakes. But I still think Lucky Coffee can make a recovery. And the reason I think, well, there's a multitude of reasons why I think Lucky Coffee can still make a recovery. The reason I think this is because one, everyone can recover from fraud. It is very possible if you take the right path, if you have the right management and you have the right goals in mind. You have to understand that there's a lot of companies that have committed fraud in the past that are doing very well. General Electric, Wells Fargo, and all these companies all committed fraud back in the day and they're still up and standing and a lot of people still use them every single day. So it's not like, I mean, obviously fraud is bad for the name. It's bad for the brand tarnishment. I mean, when you think of Wells Fargo, most people still think about the fraud that happened a long time ago. So overall, 
Luckin Coffee does have to know that this did tarnish the brand and it did leave a lot of investors with a sour taste in their mouth thinking that I would never invest in Luckin Coffee. But I mean, a huge coffee chain that's based out of China with 6,000 plus stores set to rival Starbucks. I mean, overall, I still think Luckin Coffee is a good investment. As you guys saw, the stock has been rallying very, very well. And the reason why I think is because, I mean, at the end of the day, this thing was once $50 a share and now it's trading at $3 a share. I mean, yes, it is risky because the company did commit fraud, but at the same time, you have to understand that if, it, if you are investing in Luckin Coffee, there's a lot more upside than there is downside with this stock. I mean, let's say you buy 100 shares of Luckin Coffee, you know, that's basically $300, you know, you, but you could you know, the company could make a good recovery and it could end up being like, let's say $20, $25 a share one day. You know, you could be up a lot on your investment. That's why I actually do see the personal investment in Luckin Coffee. People have to understand too that although Luckin Coffee did commit fraud, you know, we have to, no one's seen their updated financials. So the company could have been doing very, very well right before the fraud happened. You know, people don't don't have the financial, so people don't know if Luckin Coffee is actually a very profitable company. On top of that, a big thing that a lot of people notice about Luckin Coffee is Luckin Coffee has a lot of cash on hand. You know, excluding a little uh, some fines and some legal settlements and stuff like that that they they have to deal with. I honestly don't think it's going to be too much that they have to pay out. I mean, as you guys saw, their fine in China was only $9 million. And I think Luckin Coffee has somewhere of like $850 million cash on hand. So $9 million is kind of like a slap on the wrist. But I think if Luckin Coffee continues to grow, they keep, you know, if they rapidly keep growing storefronts, advertising effectively, offering discounts like they're doing, and when the pandemic seizes away... I Luckin Coffee can actually make a recovery and this is can overall increase your cash on hand. Now, all in all, Luckin Coffee still is a risky investment. I mean, you guys have to understand, I am very, very bullish on Luckin Coffee. Not to, I know they committed fraud and I'm not promoting fraud companies, but I just think the business model, although we haven't seen financials, I think the business model is a very good idea. I mean, a big coffee chain that's based out of China is a very appetizing investment. And I know that the stock in itself, because I've seen it before, can recover from fraud stocks can recover from fraud so that's awesome i know i know a lot of investors did lose a lot on luckin coffee but you have to understand that you know a lot of people still are, are holding their investment in luckin coffee because you know they it's made to believe that you know the stock can recover and overall i mean you have to understand i'm very very bullish on luckin coffee because i know they cleaned out management it's still expanding like crazy. They're still operating and they're still making money. And that's the biggest reason why I'm actually invested in Luckin Coffee. Now, I know a lot of people are speculating bankruptcy. And I know that after the fraud, if they just kind of started shutting down stores and they weren't doing anything about it, then this would be a whole different conversation. But the fact that Luckin Coffee is still up and running, they're still making money. They cleaned out the management. They're dealing with the lawsuits. And they're basically doing everything that the company needs to do to come back from this fraud. And I know that once the company releases updated financials, we can actually see the overall business model, see how the company is actually doing, and then we will, we will we can overall give a better evaluation of where Luckin Coffee stands or where it could be in the future. No one knows if Luckin Coffee was profitable or not. I mean, the way I see it, I do think they were profitable, but they wanted to appear more appealing to big time investors to get the backing from these big banks so they could keep expanding faster. But if you weren't profitable, I don't think you could build 6,000 stores. And I know they're still opening up more stores and they're still expanding. Like, Overall, I still do think the company was profitable, but I don't think that they were as profitable as they were making it seem to be. I still think Luckin Coffee is a good investment. Obviously, everything I say in my videos is just my personal opinion. It's not financial advice, so I am not telling you guys to go buy Luckin Coffee. I'm giving my overall ana analysis on Luckin Coffee and why I think overall that Luckin Coffee is very, very appetizing right now. Just because it's cheap, it's still expanding, they're cleaning out the management, they're dealing with the lawsuits. I mean, they're just doing everything that the company is needs to do to kind of come back from this whole fraud thing. But with that being said, guys, that's all I really have to say about the video. Let me know down in the comment section below, guys, what you think of Luck and Coffee stock. Are you guys impressed with Luckin Coffee's recent rally this week? Do you think Luckin Coffee stock can recover after the fraud? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. With that being said, guys, have a great day.